Morning, beautiful. It is great to see you. Oh, man, am I grateful to have a place to be in weather like today. There's a good old southerly blow out there and it's very cold and very windy. So inside, we get to play with rocks, of course. And today, we have this. This is sea jasper. And that little whatnot there is actually not solid. You see, yeah, there's a little cave in there. It's got teeny tiny crystals in it. Good morning, Linda. I washed your hat. My crown is clean again. Um, Linda knitted me this fabulous hat. It's beautiful. I've just got an itch on my head. Um, so we've got sea jasper. And, yeah, you can see that it's kind of grown in layers. But it's got all these little round bubbly bits. And they're so beautiful. Um, so here they all are. And I just really enjoy this little one. It's gorgeous can just turn it round and round and round and keep seeing beautiful things. Good morning, peeps. I can see you coming on. Nora and Jan and Sang Marie and Claire. Good morning, beautiful beings. It's great to see you all sharing in this beautiful sea jasper, which I really do enjoy. Now this, this, I finally know what it is. Um, this and I haven't got the little label that tells me exactly where it comes from. This is a piece of stone from Africa um, because my one-time one massage therapist went on a tour to Africa and I said, bring me back some rocks um, if any of them want to come because why should you just assume that a rock wants to leave where it is and go somewhere else? Zena, Laurie, it's lovely to see you. Good morning, beautiful beings. So this, I sort of look at it and think it looks a bit like flint. And it does because, you know, um, and from memory, this, no, I can't remember where it came from. I'm not going to try to pretend, but it definitely asked to come to New Zealand from Africa because um, he went on a safari tour, so somewhere in Tanzania or somewhere around there. Um, and I finally saw um, on a thing that was all about different kinds of quartz that this is chert or kurt. I don't know whether it's a ch chert or kurt with a silent um, h. So C H E R T kurt. Is how I say it. And it's kind of milky and white and does look a bit like volcanic glass. But that's what it is. And it's got this lovely surface on it, see? Um, who knows how that formed? I don't know. It's like it grew in a layer because it's got it on both sides. So yeah, there you go. That's what it is. Morning, Oma. It's lovely to see you too. Whee! Laura, John, good morning, beautiful beings. Julian. We're all over the world now. We're in the Gambia. We're in the UK. We're in the US. I don't know whether I know we're in Australia. We and of course we're in New Zealand. Let me not forget my own country. I was actually walking home, thinking about the fact that I don't watch the news. I'm really completely, almost entirely ignorant about what's going on here, and thinking, oh God, should I, should I? You know, a good person is informed. And it's like I thought. I really don't contribute locally. I do stuff globally. I don't know if that makes there's something wrong with me, but that's just what I feel so much inside myself. Last but not least, this very ordinary, but still perfect and extraordinary in itself, little piece of tumbled amethyst. What can you say? It's not perfect. It's got little flaws. Uh, it's got inclusions. And it's fabulous. And it said, I'm coming on the live today. So there you go little piece of amethyst and speaking of you know my truth everybody's got their truth everybody has who and how they want to be um and some of you asked me a ton of really good questions yesterday and you know if you look at the comments the big questions some of the questions i don't have answers for in fact i don't have answers for any of your questions i only have answers for my own questions and i can share some of my answers and maybe they'll be useful to you and maybe they won't and that's cool and I've just realized I'm gonna get a really cold lap if I don't put a cushion on it it's the rule there has to be a cushion on the lap um so you know it's like because I think it was you Emily you asked me a, a big question great question and you know I wrote to you but part of it that I decided to talk about today or which was the kind of stem the trunk of today's conversation was about well, you know, I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about that and I've got these options and, you know, all these choices whirling around as possibilities. And, you know, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do both? Like, what's the right way? And it was that, that question of what's the right way. And I thought, well, who the hell am I to 
say? <laughs> um, who the heaven am I to say? How do you know, right? Um, so that's the first question about it. And, and, and the thing that comes from how do you know what's the right way when there's a million different choices and, you know, maybe things are confusing and maybe there's a lot of emotion flying around because stuff's coming up for you and that's what we were talking about yesterday when shit comes up. And man, did it blow up for me yesterday. By the way, you think synchronicity is an action or what? Oh, my God. I don't know if I have time to tell you. Anyway, it blew up for me. I had to deal with it. Um, and... This morning, I dealt with it. Wow. Anyway, like I say, probably don't have time. So you have all of this stuff going on and you're thinking, how do I deal with this? Or how do I choose, you know, what's my path forward? Um, and there is no right way. There is absolutely no right or wrong. I don't care who's told you what. For all of the limitless possibilities, this is my personal credo, okay? This is what I believe. For all of the limitless possibilities that there are ways of being, of expression, of choice, of action, behavior, thought, feeling, everything that are available on this planet, none of them are right or wrong. And why do I say that? Because there's people who do pretty heinous things. If you put yourself in the shoes of the person who did that thing that you look at and go, oh, Oh my God, that's awful. I guarantee it would make sense to you at the time. This is really ugly, but I guarantee if you could get inside their head and their physical expression and what their body chemistry is telling them, their program and everything else, morning Maria, it would make sense to you. You would understand exactly why they're doing what they're doing. Oh, cool. Hear the bed sing. Awesome, John. Um, so, you know, that's a really ugh, pretty hard thing to um, stomach for some, particularly if you've gone through shit or you've seen shit. Um, the other thing that is really big, you know, I just remember listening recently to a, a chap telling a story. He nearly died, right? Um, and he came back. And he said, you know, <laughs> it's this really embarrassing thing. Every, and it was like this beautiful place. And he was like, oh, this is so lovely. And, I, you know, I feel whole and everything. I, I'm, I'm great. I'm great here. And he was given choices about whether to stay or come back. And he decided to come back. Um, but, you know, he said the thing, everybody goes there. Everybody goes there. When, we, when Everybody who dies goes to the same place. So the whole polarized thing about reward and punishment is a very human construct that's been put on something else. Again, so just, you know, let's explode a few heads today. Anyway, so your way actually really is your way and only you can figure it, feel it, work it, sense it out. But the caveat on this is that if you are in fear, if you're in anger, if you're in desperation, if you're in sorrow, if you're in trauma, if you're in depression, you are running the emotions of survival and that means your brain is incoherent and so you are not thinking clearly and you're also not connected to your truth. You're not. Whatever crap is circling around inside your head that you're trying to work out while you are still in the space where you are feeling how crappy that is and I was there last night and I watched myself in that space and I thought I'm going to allow you to be present with your feelings and your reactions a little bit because I wanted to observe them but I know what happens if I just keep going round and round and round and round and analyzing my problems from within the emotion that created them in the first place. Nothing good comes of that. They just get bigger and uglier and more painful, right? So I know that. And the more we think about our problems from the state of mind and body, the state of being, the emotional state of being, that they bring up in us that pain, that fear, that anger, whatever it is, the less we have access to whatever our way, our answer, our truth about that is. So 
it's really important to understand this because, you know, you have a trauma, you have a difficulty, you have a struggle, you have a depression or whatever it is, and you go and talk to a therapist about it. And I'm not bashing therapists because they, they, some of them are amazing, some of them aren't, but that's the same as plumbers or, or school teachers, you know. They're really good and they're not so good. And they perform a valuable function. They, help, they give people a safe space to explore their stuff, right? But I know, because I've spoken to friends who said, oh, you know, I went to see this counsellor or whatever, and really all they did was they encouraged me to complain and to rehash the story and go over it and over it and over it again. That isn't helpful. It's just analysing the problem from within the state of mind and body that created the problem. And you're never going to get anything new or useful doing that. So what's going to feel like your way when you are in that state? It's going to feel like your way, but that's because it's within that state. So, you know, to lash out, to be angry, to, to be fearful, whatever it is. Morning, Abigail, honey! Um, that's going to feel natural and normal and right and sensible, and it's going to feel like your truth. But it's your incoherent, unbalanced, out-of-connection truth. I hope this is making sense. I'm pretty sure it is. So... If you want to access a truth that's going to help you become more coherent and have more peace and create more healing and create more, more of whatever it is you want in your life, and man, it's dark out there and I didn't turn the light on, but you can still see me, um, then uh, you have to get into a different state of mind and being. So then you have to start thinking greater than you are feeling, which can be extremely challenging. Because remember, your body is conditioned to that feeling, and by the way, it's addicted to it. Um, gee, a few of us hit the wall, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Because you have to be the coherent energy with the incoherent energy, Linda. God, a hat off, really. I I'm proud of you, because you self-regulate. Tracy, good morning, honey. It's really challenging, right? I'm not saying this is easy. And I'm aware that I live in this little paradise where there's just me and my husband, right? Um, and there's so much that I don't have to deal with. And I'm aware that's a function of my life, that I get to have that so I can do what I do, right? Okay, so never mind. That's how it is. Um, so we got to somehow change our state, um, and trust me, you know, I did not have time to sit down and do my meditation. And by the way, I went to bed an hour late last night. Um, I slept really well, but for three quarters of the time that I had this idea that I should sleep. And I got up and I was tired, but I went and got coherent and I had this amazing experience. I truly had a healing this morning. It was amazing. It's awesome. Um, so, and I created it by myself, you know, connecting to the unified field, pulling all the energy out of my body. Whew. Um, getting coherent and having the answers come in. So, enough talking, Maddie. Well, let's do it. So, well, I want to reprise this because, you know, a few weeks ago we were talking about opening your heart and how to make your brain coherent. And I'm giving you the cheats really quick version. This is not the fullness and the depth of it. You can't do that in a 20-minute live, but I'd like to offer you tastes. I'd like to offer you explorations and encourage you to go do more yourself, right? And if you are doing it more yourself, and this is the last piece, revisiting it and repeating and practicing and, and relearning is not just, oh God, I still haven't got this. Because every time you explore a new idea or try something new out or poke another thing a different way or try it again, you're firing and wiring a new circuit in your brain and you are changing your brain. You are literally changing the architecture in there. So you come back to it, you have not got the same brain and you're not the same person. So you're not standing still. You might feel like you're standing still, but that's because the chemical addictions are still going strong and you've got more neural, neural nets to prune apart and you've got to recondition your cells. I finally figured out about the conditioning part now because I've re been reading, rereading the second time now, um, Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, You Are the Placebo, right? And I understand about, con about um, conditioning a bit better because I was always wondering, you know, let's say you're just maxed out on stress hormones or fear hormones or depression hormones, all the same stress hormones, right? And, and, and so your bloodstream is just awash with these things. And on the outside of your cells, there's things like flowers, little antennae. They open up and they receive things, receptor sites. Now, if you have a lot of stress hormones, one of two things can happen. Either the cell goes, oh, it's like 
We've got a lot, like when there's queues in the supermarket and there's too many, they'll open up new checkouts so that more people can go through the checkouts. So the seller says, oh, okay, I'll make some more receptor sites. And, business, and, and that's great, you know? So we have, now have more receptor sites for stress hormones. But then if the stress hormones go away, those receptor sites say, ah, 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 I'm hungry, feed me, feed me, feed me. And the body sends a message to the brain that says, now you've got to feel stress. I'm going to send an ugly thought to your mind so you can feel stress. Remember, we were talking about that yesterday. So, um, yeah, so that was that's one way. And the other way is that there's so many customers waiting at those, at those on those queues that, you know, the cell makes more receptors. And then it's like, oh, there's so much of this stuff here. I, I'm just ignoring it now. I'm bored. I'm not paying attention. And then you get resistance. And then you have to have more and more and more of those stress hormones to even make the cell receptor w- w- open up. And so you have the situation where people will, will start a fight because they're addicted and they need their fix of drama. Or they'll think about something sad because they need their fix of depression. So, you know, you've got to push against and decondition your cells to whatever it is that they're used to experiencing in the internal environment of your bloodstream. And that takes time. You might have been doing it for 40 years, like me. It's going to take some time. So, all of which is to say that's why it's challenging, that's why it doesn't happen immediately, and that's why you will not connect to the answer and the release and the freedom that you desire while you are still thinking and feeling within the confines of the problem that you are trying to solve. It does not work. Period. just doesn't. So... Let's do some work with coherence now. (sighs) Because the big thing, where are we going to start? Okay, I don't know. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this now. We're just going to go on a little, a little journey. So, (sighs) yeah, we always start with the heart. Okay, so please, however you wish to, and I may close my eyes because it helps me focus, but maybe I'll look at you. But then you'd have to look at me. I encourage you to let your eyes close and let your awareness rest in the center of your chest. Just let it drop in there. You know, there's a breastbone that you can tap on. (laughs) An inch or so, a few centimeters behind it. Let your awareness rest there. Yeah, yeah, I know. The brain is like one of those wee electrons around the old-fashioned model of the atom it doesn't want to settle there but keep bringing it back keep bringing it back if your brain is really busy and you've had a hard time it's going to take some effort and it's worth the effort so keep bringing it back you know it's like an unruly horse or a dog you're trying to train and as you put your attention in this place in your chest begin to let your breath go in and out of your chest as well Let your breath come and go from your chest. And remember, it doesn't need to just come and go from the front of your chest. Why don't you imagine that it comes and goes from the back of your chest as well? Your heart center goes in all directions. Yay, Andrea! You know how to breathe in your heart. We all do. Breathe in and out. And then, you know, play further with this. Because we can cheat because we're allowed to cheat. So you're breathing in the front of your chest and you're breathing in the back of your chest and you're imagining the universe is breathing with you, right? So breathe in and breathe out back to the universe. And then allow, you know, who says that you just have to breathe in the front and the back? What if you let yourself, it's like you're just expanding out with like a flower in all directions as you breathe in. And you breathe out and you imagine your heart just gently opening like a petal. Tanya, beautiful to see you. We're just opening, we're just breathing, we're just becoming heart-centered. Now this is where you get to change your energy and this is an effort of will when it feels like shit. Okay? 
So that's fine. Change your energy. You have a picture or a feeling or a thought that flies into your head when I say, who do you want to be? Where do you want to be? How do you want to feel? Just grab the corner of that blanket and call it, pull it closer to you. Change your emotional state. Choose to drag up some of that emotion. Choose to put yourself on a movie theater in your mind's eye and put that movie theater in your heart and sense yourself, feel yourself with the vision and the experience of feeling some of that experience that you desire. And you see, everything that's so-called real around you is going to say, hey, keep looking at me, keep looking at me, keep looking at me, I'm a problem, I need you to focus on me, I need you to pay attention to me, I need you to put your mind from one thing to the next thing, to the next person, to the next problem, to the yesterday and tomorrow. No. Grab that corner of what you desire to experience and bring it into your heart and breathe it. Blow it up like a balloon. Make it bigger. And as you breathe out... Relax into it some more. Just breathe in and out and relax into this little corner of what you desire. It might just be something that you can see in your mind's eye and you think, oh, I want that. Or it might just be the vague sense of a feeling or it might be a certain sound or it might be the sense of the presence of a person that you love. Allow yourself to relax into it. And as you relax into it, and I can feel you doing this, and I can feel some of your brains that, you know, what? You want me to pay attention? What? And it's okay. Just keep bringing your attention back, you see. We're roping in the animal. We're training the animal. No, sit, stay. This is where we're putting the attention right now. You be quiet. You can be noisy again in five minutes right now. Sit, stay, attention. Oh yeah, this is what I desire. And all that other stuff has got nothing to do with it. It's in my past. This is my future. And just a little bit, put yourself there. Put yourself there. Find where this is. Where are you? Pay attention to the place where you are when you are having this kernel of the experience that you desire in life. And open your awareness out into that space. Notice what's behind you, what's beside you, what's above you, what's below you, never mind what's in front of you. You see, you can change your state. Now bring up those emotions a bit more. Dare to feel something different your body does not want to do it because it's used to something else. Dare to have a different experience. It feels like a risk. It feels wrong. Just dare to do it anyway. It's an effort of will. And it gets easier. And just breathe this. Just breathe it. Stay in your heart and allow this thing to take root in you and to grow a little bit. And realize, remember this. Pay attention to this. Soak it in. Let it be real to you because you're going to want to remember this feeling. And you're going to want to do it again. Because this is you creating your future. And this is what I do every single day. And it is really worth the effort. And I can feel you all changing your state. And we're out of time. <laughs> so I am going to love you and leave you. But I encourage you that when this life finishes, that you just sit for a moment. Stay with what you created. Realize you don't need me talking to do this. Just let the feed finish. Push the power button on your phone or your computer or whatever. Let it turn off. And stay with us for a minute. I dare you to stay present with what it is that you desire. And in this space, if you stay there, you have more capacity to know what's right for you. Big love. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay present with yourself. You got it.